days before Christmas, while Sweden is paralyzed by a heavy snowstorm, a five-week-old baby called Lucas inexplicably disappears from his home. When his desperate mother Jenny contacts the police, her partner Sally comes home alone, his hands bloody from the night before. Sally refuses to explain where he has been, but when he learns that Lucas has disappeared, he's just as horrified and panicked as Jenny. I thought he was with you. A major police investigation is launched to find the missing baby. Alice, a seasoned detective, soon begins to suspect the family is hiding something. Bleak winter lights, freezing snowy landscapes, plus secrets, lies, and shocking twists. Welcome back to Scandi Wonderland. Are you? Welcome, everybody. We've just been watching the first episode of this wonderful new series. Uh, my name is uh, Jakob Stoger Nilsson. I'm professor of Scandinavian studies at UCL's School of European Languages, Culture and Society. And I'm also the founder of the original Nordic Noir book club, which uh, saw the day of light here in London more than 10 years ago. And I'll be the host uh, for the next half hour. Joining me here on stage is uh, Anna Sakrison, uh, who is Snow Angel's co-creator and director. While joining us live from Copenhagen is Mette Heno. She is the series creator and writer. And from Stockholm, we also have Josephine Asplund, who, uh, of course, play, uh, plays Jenny. Uh, you'll probably recognize her uh, as Astrid on the History Channel's series Vikings. I'm sure you're also watching that. And also as Panilla Blomqvist in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. She's been all over Nordic Noirs. So happy to have you here uh, with us. Uh, and thank you all for, for being here to share this evening with us. We'll take a few questions from the audience uh, at the end. And then, of course, very importantly, there will be drinks in the bar afterwards. Before we get to that, let's go back to the beginning as the title song of The Bridge Goes uh, and to Meta. How did you get the idea behind Snow Angels? And how did that idea come about? Um, I really wanted to do something about uh, motherhood and to do a show with a lot of um, females in the leads. And uh, earlier I, I did a lot of dramedy and comedy and um, I wanted to challenge myself and ask the question, like, what is the worst? If you want to do something about having a child and being a mother, what is the worst thing that could happen to you? And that would be to wake up one morning and realizing that your child is gone. And then afterwards, getting the feeling or the suspicion that maybe you're involved with the disappearance of your own child. So, um, yeah, so I decided to do it as a crime story, but still with the, the theme of uh, being a mother, what does it feel like to have children? What does it feel like to have other people watching you uh, have a child and all the expectation that's surrounding the sort of taboo of being a mother or yeah, trying to do your best as a mother. I think I remember the, the script had been three years underway. Is that correct? Uh, approximately, maybe, yeah, two or three years. It took a very long time to write this story. And Anna, at what point, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. And at what point did you get involved in the project? Um, I, came, uh, I, I came along, I think it was uh, Mette had sort of hooked up with Yellowbird and also Swedish uh, television as we did. And uh, they, the, the producer there, Georgie Matty, came to me and, and wanted me to read it, and I did. And I met Meta, and we sort of uh, got along. <laughs> and, and like, well, I, I really liked the first episode, and, and um, ah, it just went from there, basically. Where I had, we had a, we sort of, it, I think when I came along, there were three episodes written, and three were like a short synopsis. And I had some ideas, and Meta had some ideas, and we sort of started working out like a final version. But I think 
uh, I was just Mehta's way of talking about, you know, when I read the first script, what you just saw now, the first episode, my thought, my instant thought was like, who the fuck are these people? They're so weird. What are they doing? Why are they doing this? <laughs> and that was such an amazing feeling because very often you, you're supposed to understand immediately everything. And, and here it was just a, you know, a great feeling that I don't get them. What are they doing? And it was an amazing journey to try to get them, try to understand them, basically, which is you know, what happens in the, the episodes to come. Yeah, so yeah. I think we're getting used to these uh, complex characters from Scandinavian uh, television uh, drama, and uh, this probably uh, is the most complex I've seen it. And, and uh, Josephine, uh, over to you. Uh, congratulations with your performance here as Jenny. It's a spectacular first episode that had everybody here on the edge of their seats. I mean, in, in this series, every character is, of course, still terribly flawed. Uh, uh, Jenny, she's uh, taking uh, drugs to calm herself or to get to get away from her circumstances and then Sal has obviously something that he is is hiding but they are all very complex characters and, and can you tell us a little bit about the challenges of of getting into the mind of, of, of uh, Yenny? Um, first of all thank you thank you very much and um, I I mean I don't have kids myself so that was like a, the biggest challenge to try and imagine what it would feel like to to lose a baby. Um, I did a lot of research and a lot of uh, listened to a lot of podcasts, especially with parents that somehow had you know complications with their kids or or becoming a mother, um, being a parent in general, and how scary that is. So I did a lot of. Um, research about that and and um also like I, I grew up in a quite dodgy area in Stockholm so I um I started all, all of these people started to come into my mind a lot of both Sales and Yenny's um appeared in my mind from my childhood my friends parents that struggled with you know, drugs and alcohol and trying to get it, you know, together with, with their family and uh, worked really hard to just keep it together. So I, I did a lot of, a lot of research and, um, but what also caught my excitement and what I felt when I read the script and when I got to audition was that I really wanted to do this because of the complexity in the characters as you describe it's so much more challenging and fun as an actor to to do these kind of characters and to show and tell these stories. Thank you very much. Um, Anna did tell me a, a little anecdote about your, uh, your audition. So that was uh, my, my cue here to ask uh, Anna here uh, in the audience, <clears throat> what, what particularly aspects of character development that was sort of first and foremost in your mind, because it seems to me not only to be flawed and wonderfully ambiguous characters, but also that character building seems at the forefront of this drama series. It's not so much about the, the plot, but it is mm. about these incredibly interesting characters all around. So can you tell us a bit about your approach to character development as a director? Um, yes, I mean, uh, I think uh, Mehta had uh, such a uh, good understanding of the theme she wanted to explore and also sort of build a good construction out around the case. Uh, but also, what, what sort of so that was that was there, but uh, and the characters were also there with, but they did so many strange things and they were so flawed. And I think we just got around to just dis discussing all the time, like how how will this come about? How would that happen? I also researched a lot uh, around re regretting children. Uh, is that even possible? What, what is she going through? Uh, and I found actually only one book called Regretting Motherhood, I think it was. Uh, and just reading that in a cafe, I could feel people watching, you know, judging me, thinking, why is she reading that book, you know? Who's her kid? And, and I think it's, it's a, such an amazingly strong taboo being a mom and and um, and you know not being uh, super uh, nurturing or, or great at it and I think that's where we just you know first me and Meta and then me and the actors I what I do is I don't 
particularly take too big interest in story, but more character motivation. And I work with all you know the characters to make sure that their their motivation is always you know in the forefront of, of telling it. And as soon as the story gets in the way of motivation, we have to change it. So that's sort of an adamant work that I always do. And, and then we just talk and talk and talk, and I just ask the actors, especially in difficult scenes, like how would you do this, what do you think about it, how can we, what is possible, what is not possible, way ahead. And then when we shoot, I just let their sort of bodies and, and faces and minds uh, tell us, you know, what, what they're experiencing, and that, that sort of, you know, we had a great time doing that, actually. <laughs> I think the first time I met Josephine and, uh, uh, Arndelan, that, that, that's the father, together, they, they auditioned for this scene where, uh, you know, they realised that the kid is gone. Uh, and um, and I just said, I know this is a super difficult scene and, you know, just take it easy, I'm not expecting anything, I just want to, you know, I want to see myself, you know, how can we do this scene, it's just a weird, weird, very scary scene. And they were like completely calm, both of them, and, and they were like, okay, okay. And we were in the apartment of the casting agent, and he just went out and he came charging in, <laughs> just like he did here. And they just wept for it like that. And it was such an amazing, amazing casting. It was like a little short film on its own, you know. They just, uh, they were so, had great chemistry, and it was just, I just looked at the casting agent like, yes, okay, well, uh, uh, what can I say now? Let's do this. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. did that bring back some uh, some memories? Oh yes, and I was so mad that they chose that scene because it's so difficult. But now I'm very happy, and but it was hard to like do it again after that one one take that we did. It was hard to go back, and also you went so quiet, Anna. You just sat there, and, and we were like, "Shit, did we do something wrong? Like, did we completely misunderstand the scene?" But yeah, it was um, it was fun. How is this at all? You mentioned at the, at the beginning that it was uh, first and foremost in your mind when you uh, started writing on the script that you wanted to write about mo motherhood. And interesting, this is uh, one of the few other sort of pan-Scandinavian series, if you can say that, you know, at least with a co-written co and co-produced by Sweden and, and, and the Danish. And is there something uh, about the theme of motherhood that is particular to Scandinavia, or is it, did you discover something you know, different between Sweden and Denmark, or why do you think that this is such a, a an important theme and it, you can talk about it in this way in Scandinavia? Because we don't see many series uh, focusing on motherhood in this way. I don't, I don't know if it's um, particularly Scandinavian, but I think as Anna mentioned before, it's a sort of uh, one of the last taboos. Um, like regretting your child or not being the mother you would want to be or um, yeah sort of the I think that you can do so many stories with this theme but you don't normally see them in crime stories you see them normally in uh, in quirky comedies where the mothers are you know, trying to do their best and failing a little bit, but you don't really challenge this theme a lot. Um, so I think, yeah, what we try to do this uh, differently, like uh, going really dark with the theme, but but also to make all the characters surrounding the story also about motherhood. The grandmother who's not really who was never the best mother she could be, and the, um, the child nurse who doesn't have children, the police woman who can't have children, like sort of surrounding all the characters with the same theme and then putting them into uh, a crime story. That was like our goal from the start. Also, what was good about it, challenging the theme in this way with, you know, a, a crime in the story is that you put the characters very close to danger, they're all very close to something very, very dangerous, and that makes it more sort of uh, interesting. You can push the characters. You can sort of ask: Is are these characters actually more uh, um, dangerous to themselves, or or is something outside of them more dangerous? And and that was uh, such an interesting aspect that you can always, you know, who are they? 
what, what are they capable of? And you can keep asking that question, what happened here, but also, you know, who, um, who, who has done what, and, and, but also very much, who are they? What are they capable of, and, and who's, who's, um, who, who's dangerous? And I think that, uh, that brings also the, the question of motherhood, we take it way further, because we could, you know, really show something that they're all struggling to do their best, but, you know, it obviously fails somehow. In, in other Nordic series, uh, there has been sort of issues around gender and family and, and so forth have, have been taken up, but they have not been particularly about motherhood. And, and I've been wondering that many of these series have been mostly produced by, by men. So does it make a difference that uh, a good deal of your, your team behind this particular series are, are women and, and have been working together? Do you think that has anything to do with it? Is there a balance um, of gender in, in the business, in the TV business, in Scandinavia? Um, I think it's, it's getting there. Um, I think in Sweden right now, I can only speak for Sweden, we have a lot of interesting directors and writers and coming up. And I think just when I started out like 15 years ago, it wasn't really the case. So I think definitely good things are sort of evolving. And Josefina, are you finding there are still good uh, roles for, for women on the Nordic television drama or is it, uh, are you looking elsewhere now? You've done it all? No, God no, but but uh, but I guess characters as Yeni they don't grow on trees, so that was very um, I was very grateful to do that. But I think it's it's getting more and more interesting characters for women every day that passes, and and also I feel like we do have more and more female writers and directors. And for this TV show, I I can't even imagine having a guy as a director, honestly. It was a lot about, you know, my body, having the stomach, the boobs, not being able to breastfeed correctly. Like I, I had so many questions to you, Anna, like how does it work? How does it feel being pregnant? How does it feel having sex while we're pregnant? Like, I, I don't know if I could have been completely comfortable with uh, a man or, or, or at least not as open, I think, honestly. And we actually go back, uh, when we come to episode two, we go back for two days, that's why you're going to get to see her, her pregnant, just so you understand, you know, and why. Um, yeah, I have no idea, to be honest, whether, you know, it's very difficult. I think we're all creative people working with, you know, creative stuff, and it's just super strange too. Of course, some, some people are better for, for some stories, but, you know, who knows who's best for, for a different kind of, I don't know, or I think gender absolutely matters, but I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> they always, answer. yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, I think it mattered a, a bit when I first pitched the project to uh, SVT, because there were only women in the room, and when I said that I want to do a story about motherhood with three female leads, that are very complex and it's very dark and it doesn't give you that much hope. Um, and there were like, these women were just cheering because they wanted to see something with women made by women about being pregnant, about expectations from society, about relationships to your own mother, about not being good a good enough mother, about daughters and sisters. And, um, it, and I, I'm, I'm not sure how, it would be if it had been four men um, in that room. I, maybe maybe it would have been the same show, but I'm not sure because the, I really felt that there was so much trust and they wanted to do this story. And I and I, I pitched it that way. So there was like, to me, I think it mattered that, that, the, that when you sort of talk about your story for the first time that that you get the confidence to really build this world and that they were all cheering for this story about women and children. And, and maybe it would have been different if, if it was just five executives that were all male. I don't know, but I think, it, I think it helped. Thank you. We have a lot of people in the audience who really like to geek out on the practical things about the television production, I'm sure. <clears throat> And this film, or this television drama, was filmed during the pandemic. 
across two different nations with very different approaches to, to the pandemic. And I know, Metz, that you were not able to travel to uh, when it was being, being shot. And I was wondering sort of the practicalities around filming during the pandemic. Uh, what were your experiences with that? Um, maybe Anna, I can start with you. Yeah. No, but it was, uh, we started filming in February and I think in March, uh, it, it sort of uh, started, you know, when you shoot, you're in a bubble, you don't really know what's going on. But suddenly people were telling me that we can only have 50 extras because there's a disease coming and uh, we, we can't gather a lot of people. And that's sort of how I came to be aware that there was something going on. Uh, and... Um, and we have to shoot it now because soon we won't even be able to, you know, have 50 people. Uh, but then, of course, we understood what it, uh, that it was really serious, but we had a really small team. We were only like 25 people shooting this. So we actually just uh, kept on and we already started shooting. So we just sort of kept on shooting. Uh, and um, we decided that no one in the team could meet anyone else apart from, you know, their families and, and, uh, and be on set. And I think they actually sort of did that because we made it through. I, it was, we had to be super flexible as soon as someone, you know, had the smallest cold, everyone had to, you know, that, that, that person couldn't come and we had to reschedule and stuff. But I think uh, all in all it just worked out. We did leave a few scenes out, uh, mainly for Denmark and mainly just small kids because we just felt we can't take small children to set under these circumstances. So those were left for the for the autumn where we could test everyone, and, you know. But I think to be to be fair, there's always a hassle, you know, doing film. And for me, as a as a film director, I mean, it, there were days when we just had to do less and, and that could just, you know, be a positive thing. So I, I think, yeah, th there were a few moments where it was like, what's going to happen? But I think, to be honest, there was an, ad an adrenaline push as well, because you knew that maybe tomorrow they're going to say, you can't shoot anymore. So you just, you know, every day it was like, yes, I got this day, I got this day, I got this day, I got, and all of a sudden we were done, you know? So it was, uh, it, there was a momentum, strangely, I mean, yeah. How was it for you, not being able to be uh, visiting sets or...? I think it was really um, depressing uh, that everything happened so far away uh, because I'm normally a lot more on set and I'm normally a lot more in, in edit and involved in the process. Um, but, but still this is a, a quite different show because it's a mini series and it doesn't go on forever and, and we're not planning a second season. And since Anna did all the episodes, I sort of feel that it's more like um, that we created this together and, and that I didn't have to sort of be show running what, like I would normally do on a show. But I would of course have loved to be there a lot more and and to be a, a part of it but um but i think it's 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 quite different actually from doing a, a long running show and then doing this that is like six hours of storytelling it feels like a very very long feature film to me uh, and then you would normally give more responsibility and more yeah power to the director so sort of i think it worked out well but i would have loved to be there more was it a different experience for, for you, Josephine? Um, yeah, mainly because what Anna said, that every day we were so grateful. I've never been so happy for working. Like, I, I, I love working in general, but this was like, we were so grateful that we had every day when we can shoot, and we didn't know if we were going to shoot the day after. So that definitely made the whole shooting sort of like here and now all the time and um but also like i remember when i got sick i was home for like four days that was so odd like you never stay at home if, if you're sick and if you're shooting um and that happened to the other actors as well which also led to i think we had more time for example in me and salas apartment to shoot more uh, coverage of that and, and more scenes in, in the apartment, which was also, I was grateful for that because we had a lot lot more to give them. Thank you. So, so looking ahead and without giving 
too much away for what is surely going to be a, a thrilling last five episodes of, uh, of this. So no spoilers, please. But what can the viewers expect from the, from the rest of the series? Are we Anyone? asking me? Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to give anything away. Um, I think we can, they can expect that, uh, you know, I think what we meant to talk about a lot and that I really sort of attached myself to was that first time you meet these characters, you, you ask, you know, who the fuck are they and, and maybe they're not so pleasant and, you know, and I think uh, watching the whole thing, you get to know them and understand maybe a little bit about, you know, what drove them to be where they are. And also, of course, sort of finding out where is the baby. <laughs> uh, and um, I don't know. You want to fill in, Meta? Um, well, the, you could say that the, the, the way of telling the story is um, quite different because the next episode you go back to before Lucas was born and then you, you sort of peel the layers of all the characters and you get to know them really well. And hopefully you, during these episodes, you sort of shift your perspective on the characters. So, so the, the, like, um, if you're very prejudiced against some characters, then in the next episode, you might actually shift your own perspective on them, hopefully. Well, that's what we've been trying to do so that you sort of, yeah, you get to know all the characters really well and you peel more and more of them. Uh, the longer you get in the mystery as well. So it's both a crime story, but also very much a character-driven story. Yeah, so that, that absolutely works. I had my mind changed several times in the coming episode, so that's much to look forward to. Uh, before I open for further questions from the floor here in this wonderful uh, theater, I just can't help but asking every one of you uh, what the future has in store for you. Maybe you will you don't want to let off too much if you have any secrets, but uh, anything we can expect from uh, any of you, Josephine? Can we start with you? What's next for you? Yeah, what what I can tell you is that I'm shooting a second season of Top Dog, which is also a um, crime story, Scandinavian crime story. So that's what I'm doing right now. And the rest is secret, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing... Um... DR show, a dramedy actually, that um, it's very different from Snow Angels. Uh, it takes place in the 60s and it's about the um, Danish guy who in invented the electric curler. It's a Danish invention. And uh, how a lot of women came into uh, the workplace for the first time. So it's about women and money and men and inventions. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> Can't wait to do that. Mm. Anna, are you uh, holding your cards close to you or do you want to show a few of your cards for the future? Um, <laughs> no, I, to be honest, I just can't. Uh, <laughs> <You> can't <see. laughs> I'm not allowed to say what I'm going to do. But I will be doing uh, secret uh, service. Yeah. <laughs> a TV series, yes. TV series. Um, yeah. um, thank you very much uh, to all of you for answering. Um, these uh, questions, but I'm sure we'll have many more questions here from the audience. And we should have some roaming microphones going around, so if you have any questions... Hi, I just want to say it's a great show and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Uh, but I wanted to focus a bit on your treatment of difference and disability, because you've got at least two characters, um, the, the little bit deaf girl and the other guy, David, um, who obviously has some sort of disability, and I just wondered how, um, why you decided <coughs> to have at least two characters um, with disabilities, and how you're going to develop those characters. Um, um, I was quite um, struck by that, especially by David, and I, I'd really like to know a little bit more about your thinking. Yes, um, it's actually. In the story, if you keep <laughs> if you keep watching the show, uh, I think all the well, all the characters have flaws and and they're all broken somehow. And in some of them, you can just see it more physically. And uh, and Maria and and David are 
it's a it's a, it's a story of their uh, of their background of uh, how they were treated when they were children and and um and how that has affected her to sort of be the the mother of uh, her little brother um who is yeah traumatized from their childhood could you expand a little on, on the deaf girl because she seems quite uh, pivotal in in the story um you know turning off her, her uh, hearing aids and uh, um you know being quite open about opening the door and, and obviously looking for something outside of what you know her home yeah yes <laughs> um yeah she would definitely be be important for the story when we we'll get to know her and sort of her situation a little bit more. Um, I think you, using the fact that, uh, I mean, this was from Meta's group, but using the fact that she's deaf and has her own little world, uh, she's almost like a, you know, um, a little witness to everything going on with the, you know, the grown ups. And uh, I think it was just a beautiful way of showing. Uh, her sort of inner world and her inner thoughts and and coming closer to her also, um, giving her this special sound and just you know being able to protect herself somehow from uh, from uh, when things get a little bit too rough. I um, I did want to acknowledge that my name is Lucas, so that wasn't particularly stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was wondering, uh, Yosuke mentioned she's not a mother herself, but um, I wondered if working on a series about uh, a baby being abducted did alter or, or change your approach to parenthood. Um, does it change our perception or approach to parenthood is the question. Um, I think it doesn't profoundly, uh, didn't profoundly change me to do it. Some scenes were very difficult to do because uh, you just want to stop and say, let's take care of the baby, everyone. And um, especially a few scenes where, where Jenny later on was trying to breastfeed, it was very uh, difficult to make our scenes, and we were all sweating. We just you know, Shh, cut, you know, because it's just uh, it's stressful. I think Josephine had some issues. I remember one time when we did the part, yeah. and we thought it was difficult. Yeah, I was going to say, I had some breakdowns, but. Um... Yeah, because it was mainly my, my whole body and my, myself screamed, stop, <laughs> just don't. Um, this is not the way to do it. Um, but my character is doing something else and is thinking something else. And that was very difficult. And especially, I think it, it was in the beginning of the shoot when you're still trying to find your character. But like morally, it was difficult. What's right here? What's wrong? And trying to understand my character and her choices as much as I possibly could. But I, it it does affect you. And just ha having a small baby on set, and also having Nicole, who plays my my elder daughter, it it, it affects you. It like it gets to you somehow. And um, so it it was. It has definitely. Um, affected me but and also the viewing like I I think the whole part of judging parents and you know we have so many opinions on how to to be a good parent or a bad parent like I think that I got to question that a lot and realize that it's not black and white and it's not easy um so I think I've become more open I think uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was to talk about the fact that you know, being a parent is super difficult, it's the most amazing thing, um, but it's also sometimes difficult when you have a lot of self-doubt about it, and you don't really know always that you are doing the right thing. And I think um, trying to talk about it, you know, I mean, the kid always has to be the one that we want to save. We always want the kid to do okay. Uh, but sometimes being a parent, you, you're not always, you, you, you can't do the best thing for you, you're not the person to do it. Uh, and uh, that was challenging, of course, uh, but also sort of interesting to, to talk about and also portray. And I think a lot of parents can recognize themselves in Jenny without being as far out as she is. And, and I thought that that was, that was interesting uh, to see 
that we sometimes actually can be quite bad parents, even though we mean well and we love our children uh, uh, in smaller ways than taking drugs and, and you know, not being there for them. Just, uh, just, uh, and I think that, you know, um, yeah, I think I've done that. Hey, um, just a quick question um, about the location. Where were you filming in, uh, in Sweden? Um, just outside of Stockholm, in, uh, in, uh, mainly just outside of Stockholm in uh, a place called Wallberg, um, but also in Hamburg, which is also on the other side of Stockholm. Okay, thanks. And we had a question over here. Uh, yes, hi. I just wanted to ask uh, Meta um, a couple of questions. One of them, what, were there any other writers, as you weren't able to be on set, working with you? And, I mean, in general, is it normal for a TV series just to be written by one person, or is it usually more like a, a team, in, in your experience, anyway? Okay, uh, I think normally um, shows are written by more than one writer. Um, I've done two other TV shows, one where I wrote with the three episode writers and one where I did all the episodes myself. But I think this, in this case, because it, it feels like this is one long story and it was uh, a mini series from the beginning, uh, it, only made sense that I should write all of it, but it took a very long time. But it's, yeah, normally you would be more writers, um, but uh, to me, it was really important that it's, that it had the same tone and it, um, and that I had control over the written word at least, uh, because it's so character-based and it's, um, it's, it's really hard to give to other writers if uh, if if it's so sensitive, I think it's a very sensitive material. Um, so to me, it, it 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 it's the only thing to do if you do a story like this. I think also that um, Meta did rewrite during shooting. We talked all the time on the phone, and I just explained that this happened. She looked at dailies and and. Uh, I want to try this, what do you think, you know. So I think we had a good collaboration all the way through and, and she just worked from what she was and, and sent it over. So I mean, she, you were present in the whole, during the whole thing, even though you weren't actually on the set. Um, uh, she, yeah. On the ship, yeah. We have come to the end of our time together here today or tonight, so uh, please join me in thanking Mette and Josephine and uh, Anna and uh, to all of you, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon.